Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unisor Education. Um, we will talk today about um, magnetic field produced by um, moving charge. We actually approach this from two different sides. One side was if we have electric current I amperes and we are at certain distance R from this current and the first formula which was um, kind of logically derived but then obviously um, confirmed by experiments was that magnetic field at this particular point magnetic field intensity is equal to mu i divided by 2 pi r now mu is magnetic uh, permeability of the media between these, if it's vacuum, it's mu zero. I is amperage, and R is distance, basically. Now, the magnetic field lines around this straight wire, well, we assume that wire is infinite, very long, okay? Infinite in mathematics. Um, so these magnetic field lines are uh, circles around the wire every circle is in a plane which is perpendicular to the wire itself and uh, obviously there is a, some circle which is going through this point and that's what magnetic field at this particular point is and the direction is perpendicular to both uh, the magnetic field line and uh, uh, perpendicular to uh, wire and perpendicular to direction to the wire so it goes um, it's a tangential line to magnetic field line and it would be either directed towards the board or outside of the board, perpendicularly. So that was one formula which we have derived. And then we were examining one particular uh, particle moving, uh, charged particle moving in space. And um, it produced spherical magnetic field um, lines and uh, if you are an observer then the magnetic field intensity in this particular case depends on um, different well we had different formula the formula is mu times q q is charge of this particle electric charge and then there is a speed, vector speed, um, times unit vector along this direction from my observation point to the charge. Now this is speed. And divided by 4 pi r square. r is the distance. Variable distance. Now here, all these pieces are uh, constants the uh, current is basically running through the wire but these are constants in this case uh, this r is definitely variable as the particle is moving now instead of this i would rather put v times sine phi where phi is this uh, it's the length of this vector times length of this vector which is unit vector so it's one times the sign between, between them. That's the magnitude of the, of the vector product. Now this vector product uh, combines in itself also the direction. And the direction would be the same as in this case perpendicular to the board, either towards the board or outside of the board. Right? So that's basically the formula would be, and I will re replace it um, with this. It would be easier for me to prove what I want to prove. Mu Q V sine phi divided by 4 pi r square. So my question is, now what is the current? Current is the flow of electrons. Now every electron basically can uh, obey these laws. So if I will summarize the magnetic field intensity at this point 
from all the electrons which are moving along this infinite wire and I will integrate basically all of these in, uh, together I should have this formula that's kind of a logical thing if I don't it means something is wrong in my theory so the purpose of this particular lecture is to prove that the theory is really fine there is definitely the way from this to this and this way is basically through straightforward mathematics and calculus obviously and that's exactly what I would like to do right now so <coughs> let's think about it now I will have to somehow um, put mathematics into this flow of electrons so what I have decided to do is this is my infinite wire so let's start from let's say it's point zero so this is a minus uh, and this is a plus as far as the length is concerned and I will, ta I, I will take only a small piece of the wire from x to x plus dx now this is my observation point observation point now I would like to measure the magnetic field intensity at this point from this infinitesimally small piece of wire considering this to be basically a particle a charged particle it has certain charge right since the electrons are movi moving it has certain number of electrons I would like to have them now the uh, the nucleus of the atom are staying still so they do not produce any uh, magnetic field because they are um, at rest but electrons are moving so electrons have certain charge so I will have the charge of this particular infinitesimal piece as a, a particle and I will measure what's my impact what's my magnetic field intensity at this point uh, relative to um, relative to this particular piece and then I will integrate the whole thing from minus infinity to plus infinity right okay so so this is R that's my distance to the wire same thing as there so this is X now first of all here is I and here is Q and V we have to somehow relate them to, 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 to it together now let's just think about it what is I I is amount of electricity per unit of time however small it is so I will take only this piece and the time would be the time uh, uh, this particular uh, particles are moving from this point to this point this is dt so basically dx is equal to v times dt speed times uh, time interval gives me this particular thing this is the speed of electrons how they are moving this is the time takes from this to this and this is the distance from x to x plus dx okay so from this we have derived that um, yes one more thing um, this is the wire and a certain number of electrons per meter it's the linear density of charge it will be presented in both cases so dq is equal to certain delta which is um, linear density of electric charge coulombs per meter times dx so dx is piece of the wire delta is amount of electricity per unit of length so their multiplication gives me this so what do I have from all this <coughs> so instead of dt so i is equal to dq would be delta times dx dt would be dx times v dx times v from this we see that density linear density of electric charge per wire which is constant obviously 
number of electrons per. They're all moving in sync. So the number of electrons or charge of all the electrons per unit of length is obviously the same. And V is, as I was saying, speed these electrons are moving. So that's what gives me I. So instead of I, I will put here delta V. I'm trying to, to get these two formulas as close as possible. Now, sine phi and r are variable. So this is angle phi, and this is the distance. As the charge is moving, these are variable. So in this formula, everything is constant. The density is constant, the speed of electrons is constant, r is the distance, shortest distance from observer to the wire, everything is constant. Here, these are variables. So I, will I would like to express all these variables through something um, which will allow me to integrate the whole thing. Well, x, basically. So, now, instead of q, I actually have to put, I will, talking, I, I, I will be talking only about this particular piece of the wire, right? So it's dq. It's an infinitesimal piece, which is, I know, is delta times dx. Okay, fine. Now, what is R? R, by Pythagorean theorem, is R squared plus X squared square root. What is sine of phi? Now, this is, this is phi. Now, this is phi. The sine of this angle is R divided by hypotenuse. Right? So I have I have expressed everything through x. And all I need right now is to substitute into this formula and integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity. And check if I will have this result. Okay, let's write it down. <coughs> so I have an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity mu times q which is delta times dx times v times sine of f sine sin of phi which is r divided by square root of r square plus x square times 4 pi and times r squared, which is r squared plus x squared. That's what on the right side. And on the left side, I have this. Well, let's just think about if this is equal to this, well, my task is accomplished. So let's check it out. And now this is the pure mathematics. which I hope we don't have any problems with calculus. This is a simple integral, actually. So first of all, instead of proving that this is equal to this, let me do a little bit simplification. Uh, so I have to prove that this is equal to mu delta v divided by 2 pi r. I have to prove it, right? Well, I don't have to prove this. I don't have to prove this. I told you I don't care about density because it cancels. I don't have to prove this. I don't care about the speed either. You see? Now, uh, I don't have to care about pi. Now, this is an even function, which means it's symmetrical relatively to zero. Left part from minus infinity to zero is exactly the same as from 0 to plus infinity, because it's all x squared, right? So instead of integrating from minus infinity to plus infinity, it would be easier for me if I will integrate it from 0 to infinity and multiply by 2, okay? Now, 2 and 4, this is 2, 2 divided by 4. So I don't care about this, don't care about this, don't care about this. So, 
from now on I will just have to prove now I will multiply both by R so it will be R square which is 1 so I have to prove this integral equals to 1 right all right so let me write it down integral from 0 to infinity what do I have left r squared dx divided by r squared plus x squared now this and this would be power of 3 seconds right <coughs> okay and I have to prove that this is equal to 1 that seems to be relatively easy thing and actually it is a couple of substitutions will give me the good result so the first substitution obviously you see too many r's so I will have to do this I will have to have x divided by r is equal to y so x is r times y dx is equal to r times G, uh, dy so that's now x from 0 to infinity is exactly the same as y from 0 to infinity so I don't have to change my limits of integration it's still from 0 to infinity by y r square dx is r dy r square plus x square is r square y square 3 second equals now think about this this if I will have r square if I will uh, factor out what I will have would be r square times 1 plus y square and all this in 3 seconds right <coughs> so r square in the power of 3 seconds will give me what it will give me r cube and this is r cube so we cancel it out so I have only things which does not depend on r and it's not supposed to So this is the integral. I have to prove that it's equal to 1. Right? <coughs> OK. Uh, the standard substitution in this case would be y is equal to tangent of z. Now y is from 0 to infinity. 0 would be from 0 to pi over 2 right as angle is changing from 0 to pi over 2 its tangent is moving from 0 to infinity okay now um, dy is equal to first derivative of tangent I think I wrote it down somewhere yes it's dz over cosine square of z now I do not remember this formula um, it's very easy to derive it because it's sine over cosine and I do remember that sine derivative is cosine and cosine derivative is minus sine so anyway that's the result of this it's very easy what else do we need um, yes 1 plus tangent z square this is sine over square over cosine square and it will be 1 over cosine square z right that's another formula so <coughs> since this is um, so it will be integral of a 0 to pi over 2 uh, dz divided by cosine square z that's dy and this would be 1 over cosine square z to the power of 3 seconds 
which is what? Um, well, that would be 1 over cosine cube. is equal to integral from 0 to pi over 2 cosine goes there so this is cosine cube this is cosine cosine cube with cosine in the second degree so it will be cosine z dz you see how simple it is now what is the integral of cosine that's a sine so from 0 to pi over 2 sine z at pi over 2 it would be 1, at 0 it would be 0, so the, re the result is 0. So we have proven that going from a point charge and doing all the integral, integrated uh, calculations, we can derive the formula for a straight line um, current running in a wire. And that would actually kind of gives much more, I don't know, solid feeling that whatever um, reasonable uh, uh, logical kind of uh, uh, statements we came up with by deriving these formulas in both cases for a um, straight line current and from moving particle they do have some 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 reason behind it some logic behind it i mean i i feel much more satisfied that these two relatively independent uh, solutions to some problems are really in sync with each other. That's what usually happens if you will, uh, let's say, solve the problem in one way and then completely different way and come up with the same result. That gives you assurance that whatever you're doing is right. So now we have an assurance that both formulas which I presented in the very beginning are actually uh, fine and there are no no logical contradictions between them. I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. It goes to unisol.com, goes to Physics 14's course, you choose the electromagnetism and among them there is a magnetic uh, field uh, produced by uh, electric current and there you will find this lecture. It's called problem number three in mo moving charges. That's it. Thank you very much and good luck.